much more pain you're going to have pulling girls you're going to fall for you know all the drama that's going to take place so we're going to have to fortify ourselves knowing that every girl that you get through courtship and get into a sexual relationship if you have a break in communication and, and you have a breakup and you never talk to her again the best thing you can do is have a wingman get you out of the house that's why you should do that before you even open the next set is to know that you're going to hurt at some point because you're going to succumb to the power of women there are buttons placed in your head right emotional uh triggers and they've been placed in your head and you can thank your mom for putting them there you know they've been put there by women and women know how to trigger them right and so they can make you cry if they wanted just trust me on that have you ever cried over a girl <laughs> ever just me okay i'm not that girl so this is where we have to understand breakup minimize sexual relationship is the point of courtship it isn't just sex it's the sexual relationship it's to have sex more than once especially if she's beautiful presuming she's beautiful you're going to want to have sex with her more than once if she's awesome the worst part is to have a game where you end up having sex with her and you never see her again something went wrong some guys will backwards rationalize it and say, hey, I'm a player, that's what I do, right? No, no, that's what you've done, and you're getting your sevens, and you're getting lots of uh, one-night lays, and you think you're all so great, but you can't keep the girl if you want it, right? It's like, I had sex with that girl last night, she doesn't want to have sex with me again. Is it the sex that was bad, or is it the phase before, right? The comfort that was, that was uh, lacking. We're now going to zoom into this area only. I go from me to sex. Sexual relationship, get a marriage counselor, right? Break up, get a therapist. <laughs> but we're going to now zoom in to courtship. Courtship two has a beginning, middle, and ending. So you can see here, all right? We're zooming just to courtship. Again, open, sex. It takes about seven hours on average four to 10 to go from opening to starting a sexual relationship. Fair? If you think it's less, you're gonna compromise for comfort levels. If it's more, you're gonna, again, compromise for comfort levels. If it's too short, you become a player, you know, attracting her and then exploiting that attraction to instantly try to go for seduction rather than get to know her and become friends and take the time to build comfort. Right? You're, you're taking the middle meat out of the timeline. And those are players. And they play with women's emotions and they get buyer's remorse. They feel like they've been had afterwards. So you don't want it too short. If you do it too long, then you're the let's just be friends problem. You, you get that, right? You become the girlfriend. And we don't want to do that because we're giving up all our value, of our friendship, we help her move, you know? Uh, she can borrow her car and you, she never has to give up an exchange of sex for uh, survival value. Because really the purpose of life, I'm gonna to explain to you attraction here. The purpose of life is to survive and replicate. And you've got roughly 28,000 days to make it happen, right? Even a fly, a DNA machine of a, of a tsetse fly. Do you know that those guys, they have sex in midair? So if you were a fly right now, you would have sex in the mind, right? If you were a mouse, you would have a family, you would raise a family just like us. So don't think that it's just a uniquely human experience. It's everywhere, it's sex. We all have this drive, it's built in. I'm now gonna break this into threes, beginning, middle, and ending. In the beginning, we're gonna attract, or what I'll do, A. We're then going to go off into comfort and then off into seduction. So there are three main stages to pick up from, you know, meat or open to sex. Okay. I'm breaking it down like this easy because there's big thought in this. A lot of guys start here in seduction. They open in seduction. You were trying that yesterday. It was abysmal, <laughs> right? You're beginning at the end. It's like, you know, uh, you went up to a two set, uh, and you know, great for the bravado of it, right? Uh, you went up to a two set and you said, it's my birthday, kiss me three times, right? <laughs> and the girl's sitting with a guy. So you don't know that relationship first. Maybe you could say, so how do you all know each other at some point? Why not convey your personality for a few minutes first 
and then find out how you all know each other, then do a little takeaway, right? So that it, they're, they're accepting your presence, and then say that. Why not wait for indicators of interest before you give them? Because if you give them and sh you get shut down, where can you go from there? Now you can, you know, awkwardly continue by IODing for the IOD she's given, you know? She's given uh, a bad response, so you punish her for the bad behavior, and then you go back to DHEing some more, trying to elicit those IOIs again. Okay, if you start at the end, you get, uh, you become the seducer and you have no attraction or comfort. Most guys start here, they start in comfort, and I can't help but believe that most of you guys were just, you were just kind of doing comfort game. No girl hated you, you didn't get into any fights, you didn't build any tension, there was no drama, you didn't arbitrarily select a target in every group so that you can not get along with her, the others could be fascinated by that. Tension is created in A2, in, in, uh, in attraction, so that when you move uh, off into qualifying the girl, she, that, that tension is going to force her to want to validate herself to you, validate her, uh, revalidate herself, and she will qualify. Some girls won't qualify themselves to you unless you create the tension. Fair? So most guys go off into comfort first and they try to get along with everybody. You know, we get along, we get along, we get along, we get along, we get along. Well, now I'm a kiss ass and get along with everyone. But if I go, we get along, we get along, we get along, eh, we get along. I mean, how do you roll with this girl? There's no off button on her. Look at her top. She just poops words. I can smell it. I can smell it. Now what? That's right. That's it. How do you even roll with this girl? You don't. Understood. Yeah. You, my dear, need a helmet and crayons. You should sit in that corner. <laughs> now what? Now what? Come on. Come on, bring it up. Nah, you don't have what it takes. That's right. See, some tension. And then everyone else is entertained by it and disarmed by it. And the fact that, you know, I'm not a kiss ass now because I get along, get along, get along, don't. Get along, right? How long have you all known each other? Do you know each other well enough to finish each other's sentences? I gotta know that, right? At some point, it's all right if I bore her for a minute or two. Well, actually, two minutes, and that's it. And then they'll throw her back at you. In fact, it could be two hundred bucks to get rid of her for a minute. But come join me for a sec, because I have a thought to share with you before I get out of here. Come join. So I'm getting peer approval. I get to isolate the target because I've disarmed you guys, right? Because of the negs. I've thrown the negs out, so you know I'm not specifically after her, but I'm curious about something. I have a new thought to share. So right if I bore her for a couple minutes, we're going to go grab ourselves a seat. I'll grab a couple extra ones so you guys can join me in a few. If you so desire. You see it a bit? And then I can take the girl. See the value of that? Tension is established and then recovered. And then when I come back, they think, you know, we left not liking each other, right? To get in an argument, basically. You know, may I have a word with you? That's a nice... You know, thing to say, may I have a word with you? So they think they're in trouble. And you can isolate. Look at you, Miss Popular, surrounded by all these people. I had to come in acting drunk just for a chance to meet you. Who are you? What makes you so damn special, Miss Popular? That's a qualifier. See the value? Right? Okay. There are also guys who do it right. They go and they do attraction, yeah? Stimulate the stimulation, the DHB material, but then they exploit that and jump over comfort, shrinking it down, and go straight for seduction, and those are the players. So you don't want to open there, skip over, and go to seduction. You also don't want to begin in the middle, you don't want to begin in the end. So those are all errors. You want to begin at the beginning, do attraction, get attraction, then build some comfort, and then she'll seduce you. That's the proper way of doing it. Now with that said, I have broken them into the beginning, middle, and ending of attraction, the beginning, middle, and ending of comfort, and the beginning, middle, and ending of seduction. A1, A2, A3, C1, C2, C3. I'm just naming them. I'm labeling them. S1, S2, S3. Now we can talk about them. Because you have to get good at A1 in order to get to A2. Or not good, proficient. You don't have to be a great A1 guy. Just get A1 done, son. Open. Get in there. Start A2ing. That's the point of it. Right? In here, the point of building some comfort is so that you can see her another time in C2. 
build enough comfort so that you can really take time in comfort with her, right? There's always a, a reason. Uh, seduction, uh, S1 is arousal, and then you're dealing with last minute resistance to, have, uh, to get to sex. There's something that has to happen there, arousal. You're now turning on seduction. In comfort, you're beginning to get to know each other in comfort. In attraction, you're starting the attraction phase by initiating the conversation without telegraphing interest in them. I need them to be attracted in me before I can show interest in them, just because they have nice tits is not reason enough. I recommend not complimenting the girl's anatomy. Unless, I think I break the rule, like yesterday, there's a two set and the small, not so attractive woman, who was still lovely and apparently could sing, right? Uh, she had her boobs showing. So it's flattering at some point for her, for someone to say, like, those are unreal, those are beautiful, like, wow. You can just point it out, right? As an exception to the rule. Generally, of course you're not gonna do that. If you're going to compliment somebody, it's nice to say, you, tra you, you traverse the stairs with great poise. Any sound bite that's new, as opposed to, wow, you're hot, you know, yeah, thanks. That doesn't mean I want to sleep with you now, you know? There's no traction in that. There may be a little bit of flattering, uh, you know, you may feel flattered, but I'm seven, a seven would feel flattered by it, a nine would feel annoyed by it, because you get it all the time, right? For a seven, even a bad pickup is better than no pickup. They get hit on so little, but negs don't really work on a seven, you know? Again, I don't mean to rate women from 1 to 10, but if you're going to, you will feel and know there's a distinction between a 7 and a 10 behaviorally. Because the universe, the, the, the universe, the world, uh, the humanity treats them differently. Right? Okay. We want to become experts or masters or at least proficient in every single one of these phases. Each phase has an objective. I'm going to name them now. A1. Open. We've got two tools to help us in opening. We've got openers, and we've got FTCs or false time constraints. And you already learned them. And you already got a chance to see them in action with us, with you guys, the repetition of it, what can go wrong, if they don't hear you, if they start turning away. You have to just keep at this without worrying about your inner game or saying, I don't wanna go out tonight, go out open people, you're amongst seven billion humans. It's weird to stay home alone for too long, okay? A2 is female to male interest. I'm going to DHV in order to get IOIs, to elicit IOIs. So it's F2M interest. See, to me, the word attraction is not really about arousal, sexual arousal or, or sexual interest, right? To me, attraction is like when the word is used at a theme park, an attraction is a roller coaster. You don't have to have sex with the coaster to be attracted to getting on it. So that's what attraction is about. Stimulation, captivating, right? And then you can start to add your DHVs, which would improve her chances of survival and replication where she had to align with a man with survival and replication value for her. So what is attraction? It is a value judging circuitry in her head. She is judging your survival and replication value. If a bum bumps into you, he steps forward, when you step back, you already feel he's needy, you can feel your value judging system at work. You can give him a feeling of low value versus, like it's the girl with no boobs versus the girl with boobs. We have it built in. The girl with no boobs is less likely to feed the kids, you know, as heartily as the big boobed woman. And we have been evolutionarily designed to be attracted to the fittest girls, right? The ones that are most likely to rear successful offspring. That's what it's boiled boil down to. So when we trigger attraction, what we're really doing is we are conveying our survival and replication value. And her attraction circuitry is a survival and replication value judging system. How neat is that thought? Good, that's uploaded. So female to male interest. A, that's, that happens in A2. And the two tools we have for that happen to be DHV stories and negs. See, the negs buy us more time. She gets more comfort. 
so that you can be permitted to DHV. I can't just DHV or uh, all the time, or I'm going to uh, seem like a braggart. It, the art of DHVing is the art of the brag, right? And in that, it's like, oh, I don't want to be a braggart. Yeah, but you want to get the girl, right? So you got to convey something, you know? I don't want to tell her about, you know, the girls I've had in the past. Good, don't tell her. Show her. Show her the girls there lie. You know, when a girl comes and hugs you while you're shooting the shit and you pretend like it's no biggie, that hits. A3 is the mirror opposite of A2. See, in A2, I am demonstrating higher value, throwing some negs in, kind of create some tension, and eliciting IOIs. When I get two or three IOIs, generally, I can move forward into qualifying. A3, also known as, I'll just put a Q there, qualification, that's A3. It's a mirror opposite of A2. See, in A2, I DHV, she IOIs. See, in A3, I elicit her to DHV to me so I can positively misinterpret everything she says and IOI her back. Thank you. The only difference between those two is length of time. The hotter the girl, if she's a supermodel, for instance, I've noted that A3 has to be longer than A2. A2 is three to five minutes, depending on the size of the set. It's not 10 minutes, right? And it was all flash game and, and not getting into some DHVs being landed. You have to land those DHVs, you know? Pre-selection, leader of men, and, and show it, right? Uh, but in A3, it's, it's, so A2 has to be short. A3 is longer because these girls have been hit on so much that they're used to turning a guy on. Right? You have to be slow to be turned on. So she'll appreciate any of the IOIs you give her in C1 when you're in comfort. Right? C1, what are we building? We're building... What are we building here? We're building... Um, trust. That's what it is. And, uh, forgive me, trust is the second one. Rapport. That's exactly it. Trust. We're building rapport. Now, rapport, if you know that word, is, uh, you know when, uh, I'll give you the example, when, ooh, you okay? No, you're not yet. <laughs> Sudden gust of gravity. Uh, building rapport, it's an illusion. It's like doing, thank you. Doing instant rapport is where you get into an instant conversation with the group as if, as if they came with you, as if they know you, right? And in that delivery, they'll get to know you because they get to see what you're like as if you were already the boyfriend, you know? But you've already had sex with her a hundred times and you will do 101, but not right now. You come out with her, to have fun with boys and, and party, right? That's kind of the attitude. So you can get into instant conversation. Did you guys hear about the Titanic? Holy shit, okay, get this. It didn't sink. Uh, instant rapport. That's really the purpose of C1. It's just to get enough comfort with you so that you can see them again. There are two ways to get from C1 to C2. I'm now going to cut this into A1, A2, A3, moving. I'm going to do a little M. You're going to move them into C1. And then this whole part is called pickup. You get their phone number, right, which is known as a time bridge. I'll get to that. Or bounce. You can bounce them out to a C2 location. There are only three ways to move from location to location. And that is move them eight feet, bounce them to another venue that night, or time bridge them, get their phone number and a reason to see each other again. Getting their phone number is not a time bridge. It is a stairway to heaven. One day, maybe I'll see, we'll see each other again. Uh, maybe we'll go together for a, a really boring coffee date, you know? Or forget all that and have a reason for her to see you at another time so you can continue the, uh, the pickup, right? This is pickup. Everything that happens in C2 is mid game and end game is when you bring them back to your C3 location, which is your living room, and you then, I'll do another M, move into seduction, into arousal. Oops, uh, arousal. 
Then there's LMR, or last minute resistance. See, we're giving the objective of, of each of the phases. And then the last one is, uh, is you know, penetration, or we'll just say this, right? So now we have kind of like a reason. Rapport, trust, and this is intimacy. And again, it takes about seven hours, four to 10 hours, right? The first part is called pickup. This is mid game, this is end game. Pickup is about 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Mid game is about six hours. End game is about 30 minutes. So you got 30, 30, six hours. You got seven hours in total. And you got to hit all these waypoints, all, like all, every phase. You can't skip over a phase. You have to meet the objective of the phase, uh, of the previous phase before you can move up, right? Does that make sense? So, open, false time constraint, DHV, neg, qualify, and when you're qualifying, you're moving, so there's two things, qualifying and moving. Then you're off into C1, where you're doing rapport, where you're in isolation, keno escalation, right? Then you're either time bridging or bouncing, so you can see each other on a, on a day two, which is a C2 location, like grabbing a bite to eat at Mel's Diner after, uh, after the gig, after meeting her, uh, or us going to uh, uh, walk to walk, Right? That's where a lot more trust is established. You know, girls hop into your car, they compromise their safety, only to arrive safely at another public gathering and hop out. Massive trust has been established because you're not the type of guy to try to pull them back to your house. No, let's eat. I'm hungry. Right? Sorry. Stop. Now that I've drawn this, these are the major linear components. I'm going to show you the real route. There are three additional things here. The time bridge, the move, and the bounce. There's three to attraction, and comfort has been broken up so that there's a little bit of comfort on night one, enough to get a time bridge or a bounce. So you can get to C2, and you can repeat they repeatedly go to many C2 locations. You know, you may go to the mall with her, you may hop in the car with her, that's a C2 location. Great place to build comfort, 25 minutes stuck in the car with you. Then you go to go pick up, uh, you know, some shoes you got fixed or pick up your headshots that just, uh, you got the call that they're done. And she can tag along with you. In the car, at the mall, uh, going for a bite to eat if necessary. Things to do together, that's a C2 location. C1 is marked, the, the C1 location is marked by being in the attraction location or near it, like the smoking section, but it's quieter, it's a place to sit down, like the smoking section, whether you smoke or not. C2 is marked by not being attached to the attraction location or the seduction location, like Mel's Diner, you get a bite to eat, a 24 hour eatery. There's, it's not a target rich location, but it's nice to bring a girl to, right? And there's no place to actually have sex. Can you, in this, have sex with a girl in a, in a bathroom stall? Certainly, you can compress this down, you can even have a hooker in here as, as a model. You know what I mean? You start talking to her, interest is how much money do you have, right? <laughs> Qualification is, are you handing it to me now? Is it credit, <laughs> you know? Uh, what you can do is you can pull a girl into the, into the uh, bathroom and have sex with her, but you're compromising seven hours, right? You may have sex with her in the bathroom, but it's gonna be hard to have a date two with her still. Because she knows when you call, the only reason why you're calling is for the sex and not because you actually wanna become friends, right? Buyer's remorse takes place the next day. You can make out with the girl and then the next day the phone number doesn't hit because you made out with her for too long. As opposed to a few seconds and then said, babe, we better slow this down. Let's rejoin our friends, our friends being her friends. And when you, know, when you say, let's slow it down, you're speeding it up, just so you know. Just so you know, All right? I'm now gonna redraw this because it seems a little messy, but it meets the objectives of everything here. We're gonna move or time bridge to the C2 location, then move or time bridge back to our place. If she's too insecure or too threatened by the, you know, being in your home, there are ways to reduce that, reduce that fear, right? Like windows open, um, Blinds open, light coming in, street being heard when they come in, you smiling on when they come in. Hi, welcome. Hey, let me show you around. Always show them around. Show them every closet door. You know that you want 
courtesy 100% of the perimeter of the interior of that place, like a cat bringing a cat over to an apartment for the first time, a new, a new place, the cat is not going to come crawl up on your lap. The cat is going to freak the fuck out being in a new environment, smell everywhere, look at every nook and cranny, every corner, every co uh, closet, under the bed, find a safe spot, right? A new person coming over to your place is going to feel that too. Think of it this way. You ever invite a dude over to your house or have you ever been invited over to a dude's house? You know, you meet a new guy. It's like, yeah, we're going out. You meet me at my place. And you're like, all right. You go to his place and you're like, I'm now walking down the hallway. Do I really know this dude? Is there a, bunch, a group of dudes in there that, that are about to pummel me? Am I about to get, you know, raped? Okay. And the door opens and you're like, hey man, but you feel that nervousness, right? Uh, we don't, we want to minimize the impact of that. You know, we want it to be a positive experience. So if the girl feels discomfort, I'm going to be super aware of that. And I'm going to say, come on, let's get out of here. And I'm going to be the one to pull her out because she's expecting me to maybe make a move. And I'm like, I am famished. Come on, woman, let's go. No, keep your shoes on. We're going to head out now. You can leave your stuff here. We'll, we'll be back. We're just going to go across the street for a sushi. You like sushi? Good. Me too. <clears throat> okay. Uh, once that's happened and you're, uh, you're, you've gone into uh, the living room repeatedly now, more comforts established, then you can move off into, which is the bedroom, moving into the bedroom, uh, which is arousal. You, you can get into making out with the girl now, right? Arousing, dealing with last minute resistance and having sex. But you can't get to end game until you get good at mid game. And you can't get good at mid game until you become good at pickup. Pick up, mid game, end game. So there are three main stages we are all as men supposed to get proficient at. Those are the three main stages. In those stages, there are several phases that you have to get good at. In pickup, A1, you gotta learn to open and use false time constraints. In A2, you gotta uh, to do female to male interest, you gotta use your DHVs to elicit IOIs and use NEGs to balance that you're not hitting on her too much. Then in A3, you're going to qualify using, and what is a qualifier? It's a question. That's why I put a nice big Q there. You don't question the girls until you've gotten some interest, until you've, you've definitely, you know, uh, been told that you're kind of cool, and you've moved them into a, a, an isolated moment and are now trying to get them to talk. I don't try to get them to talk for the first five minutes. That's my time. The conversational ratio is going to be 90% me, 10% them. And that 10% is an illusion of interactivity. When I ask for, an, uh, when I do an opinion opener, it's actually a false opinion opener. I'm not waiting for a response. I don't give a shit what they think. The whole point of that was just to put it in such a way that I can answer the question. You know, if my nails are black, which I could do with marker, uh, and before we go in field, or the black nail polish that I did bring out last night, I can say, hey guys, first impression, black nails. Notice when I, when I open it, I say, hey guys, not hey girls. Even if they're all girls, I'll say, hey guys, first impression, black nails. All right, get this. Some schmarmy looking woman in the elevator said to me, are you a devil worshiper? I said to her, we're going down, aren't we? <laughs> Maybe I said it too serious. For 23 floors, she averted her eyes to me, looked at the ceiling, like literally in the corner, put her head in the corner, <laughs> averted her eyes. When we got down to ground level, the doors opened and she left, still looking at the ceiling. I am not the devil. I'm the devil's helper. And that's been a routine that I've used as an opener, right? Now, please note that when I say first, first impression black nails, right before they even answer or give me anything, right? I go, all right, get this. I'm dismissing them with my hand. I go, all right, get this. Or all right, get this. Which is a dismissive thing, you know? So I'm not hitting on them, I'm telling a story. And I'm bringing them, using spell crap, I'm bringing them into an elevator. If I want to go into a little bit added detail, what did that woman in the elevator look like? Have you ever seen the movie, There's Something About Mary? Do you remember the old lady with the saggy baggy boobies? Her, the one with the weird dark skin that she was tanning for the last 20 years, right? That girl, tanning on a rotisserie. So now I can, you know, paint a picture. But while I'm describing that, you forgot about this room. That spell crap is captivating for, for a spell, right? Good. Now that we've done that, I've got one more thing to draw, if I may. If I turn this upside down, Discovery. Mm, this all probably. Break.
between the missile transfer? Or do you think I should get one more for now? Let's get one more. And then we can wipe this out. This is a linear flow, but the mess is, when do you move, when do you time bridge, when do you bounce? Those three physical movements, thank you, those three physical moving things are phases as well. There aren't nine phases, there are 12 phases. Because you've got to get from C1, you know, the uh, smoking section, to C2, the place to eat, right? Or any place that's, you know, comfortable to hang, a friend's house with her, right? And then C3, your living room, or hers. Fair? Yeah. Comfort is broken. A little comfort here, a little comfort there, and main comfort in the middle. Isn't that neat? But you gotta get moves, time bridges, and bounces, yeah? Work there. Cheers to that, thank you. Now, why do we have moves, bounces, and time bridges? They're known as jumps. There are three jumps. There are three phases to attraction, three to comfort, three to seduction, and there are three jumps. And the reason for this is because, did you know that all pickups go through three locations? There are three locations in virtually every pickup. The attraction location, the target rich location, the comfort building quieter location that you may have to move or bounce to, right? or repeatedly get into those ones. It may take a whole week to build enough comfort with the girl and keno escalation for her to be comfortable enough to you know, come over to your house, right? If you don't have seven hours, if you're only two and a half hours in, well then, trying to finger her in the club may not be a good idea. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so at the end... <laughs> so, so you've done attraction, a uh, location, comfort location, and then you have a seduction location as well. Do you know that some guys go in without a game plan? They go in and they don't know where they're gonna take the girl to, to afterwards. They haven't set that up. Usually I'll choose two clubs per night. In the first club, you meet people and you bring them to the second club. By midnight, by 12.30, party's coming with us. You're more than welcome to tag along. Or even better, if there's a girl that likes Baxter, I get to say, hey, why don't you come tag along to the next uh, event? We're gonna get straight in if you stay close to us. Baxter will be there. So I'm structuring an opportunity for her to pursue Baxter, or vice versa, right? Which is quite nice. My buddy Baxter is my wingman. Our wingman, Sean. Okay, so now I'm gonna redraw this to make more sense. This is the attraction location I put up. It's, it's the phase, or rather the stage, because A1, A2, and A3 are in it. A1, A2, A3, in the attraction location, right? Then you've got a comfort building location. And then you got, there's another roof. And then you've got <laughs> a seduction location. You've got to meet them here. You've got to move them to, to building comfort, right? Physically in the same space again on a day two or later on that night. You've got to get them out of there and into here. And then somehow get them from here into a place that you can actually have intimacy, actually have sex, right? You can do it in a bathroom stall. But if your girlfriend of two years won't have sex with you in a bathroom stall, don't expect a quality girl that you've just met to do that, right? Maybe that's your game plan. You're trying to have sex, but you're gonna lose the nine because you're trying to bed her too soon. And then you lose her and you think, oh, fuck her, she was a bitch. That's how some people, I've heard them speak that way, that they think it's her fault. It's always your fault. If you didn't get the girl, you suck. Sack up and learn from it, and tomorrow you'll recover again. You deserve to sleep alone. And you're like, damn, I don't deserve it. You know? Yeah, but your game is not ready. So, how do we get from here to here to here? Well, let's add the M for move. We're gonna go from the attraction location, right? And we're gonna move into the nearest C1 location, which is maybe, you know, 10 feet away. Maybe it, you know, so you can lean up against uh, the, the bar and be surrounded and it's a little bit away from the speakers or the dance club, uh, dance floor around. Now, you can do multiple moves to be into various comfort locations. I know my lock-in positions before I open a set. It's something I do in my head is I look at the room and go, where are my lock-ins? Before I open a set, I know I have to lock-in at some point. So if I'm gonna lock-in here, this is a good lock-in where I can lean up, right? Shoot the shit like this, that's a lock-in. Man, join you for a moment. Can't stay too long. That's a walk-in, right? I'm now into C1. Did 
You don't have to move too far, but something has to happen. You can multiple move. I'd rather hang out with a girl for five hours in five different locations than for five hours in one location. More memories. When you're having sex with her, or at least you're dealing with last minute resistance, first time having sex with her, you're in bed with her. I want her, when she thinks, do I really know this guy? I want her to be flooded with memories, rather than I hung out with this guy for you know a few hours in one place, all right? As opposed to, I hung out with this guy for a few hours in several different places. <clears throat> Excuse me. Merging forward and backwards, new memories are made. Let's go upstairs, let me introduce you to my friends. Right, moving to another C1 location, uh, the rooftop, right, or going outside for a sec to grab gum. That's a shared, uh, a shared little adventure. Here's a quick a little routine I like to use. Let's imagine you and I were saddled with the responsibility of having to get eggnog for a Christmas party. And let's say you and I met through our mothers, and our mothers play cards together. They're old ladies playing canasta together on weekends. And now you have to tag along with me to slow me down as I go to the 7-Eleven across the street to get a job. Now let's say during that time, even though I don't know you from a hole in the wall, here's a hole in the wall, here's you, same thing, and yet I am curious. Let's imagine that during that little adventure, you got accosted. Somebody, you know, tried to mug you. Even though I don't know you, it is built into me to honor your mother and beating the fuck out of anyone who fucked with you, you and I are gonna get that eggnog and we're gonna get back. Have you ever played the video game Dragon's Lair? It's uh, not so much a video game as it is a cartoon. It was a laser disc game. And in it, Dirk the Daring, who, you know, you play Dirk the Daring, it's all cartoony. He saves Princess Daphne from the evil dragon Singe. And I was a kid and I was influenced by that. Who am I? Am I a dragon? Do I eat little girls? Well, maybe. But what I really do is I am Dirk the Daring. I slay dragons. I don't slay little girls. Of course you're going to get home safe. That's who I am. So this is pre... You can, you can hear the DHVs in that, right? Nice thing to say. Nice little uh, routine that I use. That's for comfort building. I'm saying all these things so that they feel safe around me. Okay? And I know who I am. That's another thing too. Good, so multiple moves we wanna be able to do. And if you can move her into seduction location, you know, the bathroom, by all means. But again, it takes seven hours to go from here to here on average. So we have to, as pickup artists, we have to fill time. We have to fill the time. So it's all about being in comfort. The time is filled in comfort. You're not gonna be attracting her for more than five, 10 minutes. You're going to be in comfort. Sure, you may, once you have more comfort, you may pepper in slowly, you know, season it with some DHVs. But other than that, it's you getting to know her with balance and then her getting to know you. And some of the DHVs are intimacy DHVs or trust DHVs, you know. They get to, uh, they get to feel like you're a human being and that way they can trust you, you know, as opposed to you're trying to put your best foot forward, always bragging. DHVs are sometimes uh, balanced with DLVs on purpose, you know, vulnerability things. Like a lot of guys, they never cry in front of a girl, at least until after she's the girlfriend, right? <laughs> then it's okay, then you can cry on each other's shoulder. But God forbid you'd ever tear up in front of a girl. But if you're on a day two with a girl, you haven't had sex yet, it's, it, it's, it's like you're not hitting on her. You know, you're showing vulnerability. So to convey vulnerability sometime in comfort, is gonna increase the chances of the intimacy taking place, right? Because it's hard being human sometimes, you know? I'm trapped into this body, and it gets tiring sometimes. I'm sure she can relate, right? There are two more different types of jumps, and that is the TV, the time bridge, to get to the next comfort location, in this case, C2, right? And this here, this, this loop is known as a move loop. This is multiple moves. We're gonna move into lock-in more than once, forward merging, backwards merging. You're gonna lock in, lock in, go upstairs, lock in, right? Or you're gonna time bridge, which is getting a phone number. Actually, if you don't go for phone numbers anymore, Facebook is good, WhatsApp is good, right? Phone numbers are from the 80s. Who does that? Or are you gonna text them? You know, uh, I do not indulge in a lengthy dialogue via text. I am not a schoolgirl teenager. I'm a man. You get 
the location of the, of the party, you get the time, or you'll get a Kayin five. If you don't answer, you're gone. You just vanish from my peripheral vision. You just disappear forever. And if you want to do that, that's fine. Otherwise, come out, enjoy life with the party. Right? Uh, there's a number and then a location to see each other again. A time bridge is a phase in and of itself. How to ask for the contact information. His is a great one. The, the most solid little one is how do we keep this alive? The, for me, the bigger one, you know, if I have time, no time constraints, I get to say, oh, I have quite a few of them here. Uh, uh, okay, you say, how do you keep this alive? And I'll say, uh, what steps must we take to continue this at another time? Any ideas? Well, as a social butterflies that we are, I'm sure we can come up with something. I have an idea, and then I'll say, right? If she doesn't, but oftentimes they'll just grab a receipt, grab a pen, write some information down on the paper, and it's done, right? If you have enough indicators of interest. But point is, time bridging is a phase we've got to get good at. There are gambits to make it, to make it happen, right? Uh, little sound bites to minimize the, the impact of it being uh, um, unsafe for her, feeling unsafe, where you could say, expect nothing but great conversation. Which is crazy, because you, you, you'd think it was a hit. You were hitting on each other, right? But expect nothing but great conversation, young, young lady. We will see each other again. Uh, so you have two sides to a time bridge. That's why it's called the time bridge. You're bridging over the time, you're apart, so you can be with each other again. You're gonna bridge the time. And it's a river that you can get lost in. If you fall off that bridge, if that bridge is a stairway up to heaven, you're gonna walk all the way to the top and drop into the river of time and get washed away and never see her again. We wanna minimize that. That's why you have to have a reason to see each other again. Then you can get the, the phone number. The phone number is the receipt to the purchase of seeing each other again. Don't just go for the phone number and try to go meet her for coffee and you're sitting across from each other having coffee, having a, a fucking interview like you're asking for a job, you know? I don't do that, it's not my thing. All right, and we have one more here, that's time bridge, and a bounce is where you bounce them, like what we did, you bounce them to the next venue. It's a lot easier than you think. So this is a move loop, time bridging, this is a dating loop. This is the dating loop. Get a phone number, see her again, dating loop. And then you've got your bouncing loop, where you bounce from venue to venue. And I want to do at least two venues per night on average. Okay. So now that that's been said, here's what you have to do. C1, C2, C3. S1, S2 is 3, A1, A2, A3. So you're going to go into a target-rich location. You're going to open A1. With opening, you're going to have openers. You may stack in openers into A2. You're going to use the false time constraint, either verbal or nonverbal, in order to accomplish the objective, which is to just get the fucking A1 done with no bullshit and start a 2 It's a momentum thing. It's pick it in. And if it doesn't work right, start hitting them. Amen. You know, tap, tap, tap. You know, tap them on the shoulders. And as you step back, right, continue and then stack forward to your next opener, hopefully with some DHVs in it, where they trigger, you know. Keywords are important as well, because I can open with Charlie Sheen. Like I, uh, Hollywood words, right? Uh, that's why the uh, uh, Brad Pitt, Angelina Jolie is a great opener because it sets their mood, it's spellcraft, it sets their mood to a Hollywood vibe, right? Uh, when Harry met Sally, doesn't that sound like a porn? <laughs> it's an opener. But it's like, when Harry met Sally, right? You're gonna A2, in A2, you're going to DHV, we talked about the five DHVs. You're going to get good at your DHV material, uploading those DHVs, right? During that, you may do also some IVDs, instant value demonstrations. A quick example of that is being able to, what happened there? <laughs> it's a condom. <laughs> Baby condom is to be able to do an instant value demonstration right there, right there. I won't go away, ready? How fun is that? Those are known as IVDs. You don't even have to do that for real. Watch this. I'm going to make this pen cap vanish from my left hand, this direction, and appear in my right hand on the count of three. One, two, three. Bam. Is that awesome? And now watch this. The hard part is to bring it back. Three, two, one. Bam. Huh? <laughs> no, you don't believe me. I only have one. See? See? Magic. Feel it. 
I like that it's very light. <laughs> That's what you were looking for. <laughs> Those are instant value demonstrations. They can be jokes. They can be real magic. It doesn't make a difference. As long as the response is laughter. When I do magic to one person, it's not nearly as effective as when I do it to 10 people and I have that girl see it. That's the magic. It's social dynamics. That's the magic. Mm -hmm. To me, the magic itself that I do is incidental. Right? Style would come in and do a joke magic, but we would, you know, later call discount magic. There's no magic, but it gets the same laughs. And he'd come in and he'd fucking disrupt my sets, you know, in very positive ways for him, you know? Because he'd be like, yeah, I tell him everything I know. Uh, everything he knows. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's my master. Uh, right, so we talk about A2. A3, you start to qualify. You ask the qualification questions. Uh, and I will zoom into that after I painted this whole picture, right? For what those questions specifically are and how to handle it. It's big book real release. We'll zoom into that. Then you got to learn how to move. There are a whole bunch of different little move tools and tricks and tactics. Like for instance, when you take her by the hand and you lead her through the club, I like to raise my hand. She's hand in hand. I raise my hand up and leave my hand open so that. Her hand is above her heart level, you know, where her hand starts getting cold. It's uncomfortable, you know, she's, she's being dragged through, but my hand opens so she can let go. If she does, then I have more work to do. But oftentimes, by the time I'm isolating her, her hand will stay there. I can tell how uncomfortable it is to have her hand held up high, open, and they're trying to just keep the contact. So I can tell by just raising it up for four seconds and then bringing it back down. So that's the first little um, test, the uh, keynote test while I'm moving. Next one is grabbing my fist. Does she grab? Does she hold back? Right? You can, if you want, rub this. Does she rub that? Who wants, you know? If you rub, you know, hold her here and you rub. Does she rub back? If you open your hand, does she keep her hand touching? Right? When you switch to this, does she keep her hand open, IOD, or does she IOI? Those are the little tests I'm doing when I move her, and then I let go. Remember, the power of any keynote is in the roll-off. So A1, A2, qualify. During qualifying, you're actually moving into C1. Then you're in C1, and you're running your C1 material. You may do multiple moves to be in C1 as many times, and now it's time to bounce out to C2, bounce out to another C2, then get, a, get her phone number, but it doesn't mean you have to you know, do that. Usually I like to get a phone number, stay extra, an extra five minutes, don't get a number, and then leave. The girl will expect you to leave because they're accustomed to being picked up by teenagers that don't know. The phone number is supposed to be incidental. Get the phone number, sure, get that in your pocket or you know, contact info, and then keep talking at least five more minutes, even when they expect to leave. Can I finish my story before you run off? You know, being so you know, grateful that the universe has provided a phone number for you. you know. Uh, and then you're bouncing, and you bounce to another C2 location, you bounce, or you, it's now too late, now I have to you know, use that number, see her another time, another C2 location. Finally, I get to bounce into my living room, C3 location, and then move into seduction, right? This here is every success story you've ever had so far has gone through this without you knowing. When you don't know, when you open, you don't know what you're going to say next. You don't know what the next phase is, right? When you're trying for attraction, you don't know you're supposed to try to get her to chase you. That's why you're qualifying her for longer than A2, right? When you know this, you know that during qualifying, you're going to show her some interest in qualifying, and that's what the move is. You're interested enough in telling the rest of your story to this particular person or hearing what they have to say. That's the reason, the context, for moving into an isolation, right? Then you're in comfort, and you're gonna be in comfort for as long as it takes. Do you see it's almost like a, a flux capacitor? If I change the color, this here is pickup. This here is mid-game. Right? In red, this pickup. And end game, of course, as you can see, is uh, just to here. And that's end game. Okay, 
what I've just drawn here is fucking genius. In case, you know, no one told you what genius is like. What this does is it solves a lot of things. You've got to get good at A1, get good at A2, get good at A3 to be permitted to move off into C1. You've got to know how to move to get into C1 repeatedly, right? You either are going to get good at time bridging or not. You have to get good to see her again sometimes if you can't bounce that night. It's a different game. It's, it's more accelerated. I'd rather bounce than time bridge because you're instant dating the girl by bouncing out, you know, to grab a bite to eat afterwards. And that's bouncing. You've got to get good at bouncing. There's a lot of, of knowledge in bouncing. All three jumps is a lot of knowledge. You know, I gave you, a, you know, one of the keto things as you drag her through it, to move. There's little subtleties, like if I were to say, here, can I jump for a sec? That's it. I did it. I got it. You moved. Right? If I say, here, <laughs> join me for a second, I look away while I do it and then look back. More likely to do it than if I say, come join me for a sec. If I eyeball her, come join me. They'll be like, no. What if I say, here, come join me for a sec? Okay. See that body language? They're more likely to come. Because sometimes you'll try to move them and they'll say, no, I'm staying here with my friends. Well, introduce me to your friends. That's the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, you can dress her up, can't take her anywhere. Hi, I'm Toodle Dom, Toodle Dee. When are you guys getting married? Oh, she said you're getting married. No, I didn't say such things. Right, this is what we gotta get good at. We gotta get good at every single phase and there's material to fill in this. All this material is found online already. How neat is that? So our job now that we have a structure, every success story that you've ever gone through has gone through this. Every future success story has gone through this. Knowing this will allow you to get material for each of these phases. And once you get proficient at each of those, it feels like it's easier to get the girl than not. Because, you know, if you just get really calibrated with A1, like, you know, you're walking down the street and it's just A1 happens, you're right now off into A2, your A2 it just sort of comes out naturally. It's, I, I minimize my DLBs, I maximize my DHVs, I'll throw a couple nags in, in order to disqualify myself, so I'm permitted to DHB some more. Now I start getting some IOIs because of that high value male behavior, and then I slow it down. You know, hey, thank you for the touch. It's five bucks every time you touch. Is there more to get the on? Now you're in qualification, right? And now during qualification, you're she's being you know, she's winning you over. At the beginning of, of A3, I'm crossing my arms and saying, you know, beautiful girl, is there more to get the MCI? Goodie's coming, right? And at the end. My arms are apart now. She's won me opening up and leaning in and taking interest and saying, wow, your first impression was shitty, but now that I get to know you, you're wonderful. I'm glad my friends dragged me out of the shithole. I would never have met you otherwise. See, I want to basically open with that, right? Hit, hit on the girl in the open, but that doesn't work. If bowing down and kissing a girl's feet on the open work, that would be kick up. I'd do it, <laughs> but it doesn't work. So you have to not do that until later, you know? It's the, it's the amateur that opens trying to hit on her. It's the pro that waits a few minutes before showing indicators of interest. And then qualifying her so at the beginning it's tough and at the end you no longer have to fight. And you know, mentally, mentally challenge each other with negs. You're not going to neg her in comfort. Unless she deserves it. Unless she's earned it. You know, she said something stupid, you put her back in her place. You know? Any questions? <laughs> Doesn't this solve things? Yeah. It's like this is this is the answer. Yeah. This is the answer to pulling with consistency. Because we're gonna A1, you're gonna get to A2, and you're gonna get good at A1. <laughs> A2, you have to get good, otherwise they won't start qualifying. The good news is you get to say no to the girls, slow it down, speed racer, and you get to pick yourself up, which is fun to do, and you get to stimulate. Captivate, attract. All of Oscar is all at the beginning, right? It's actually more, more, uh, more resolution. It zooms in even further, Oscar, right? It's just nice to have in your head. To, you know, for me, it's um, open, false time constraint, DHV, neg, qualify, start with my uh, moving into comfort.
and doing comfort material. That's it. That's every set. Nice. There's, there's a momentum to it, right? So those are my thoughts. Say thank you. That was online? <laughs> I didn't even know. <laughs> wow. Love to you, brothers. <laughs> nice. And now I'm going to sign this. Who wants it? Who's earned it? Who did the most? you like to share? It's a quick, it's a simple question. And, Who did the most um, sets yesterday? Did most I was sets? a little bit of an introduction, by the way, Who into a live boot camp. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, you're more than welcome, guys. And to the guys who said you were a coach, well, thank the mystery's teachings. Uh, bum, 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 bum. You're welcome. Uh, so we're in Amsterdam, just to bring you up to speed. Uh, we've got uh, one of our coaches. Uh, we got a Riga boot camp next week. Uh, we got a Stockholm. We have a coach program for people who are joining us to become coaches on the journey over a six to 12 month period. And what else? Yeah, that's in Amsterdam in the end of August. It's been a rock star weekend. I am fucking knackered. Okay, but it's been fun. I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Uh, please share, swipe left to right. Uh, and share on the iPhone, so swipe up on the Android, click on share with your followers if you're on the replay. Do pump the hearts, show us the appreciation. Miss you'll be looking back later and look at your comments and uh, we'll respond on the three second rule group. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care, take action. And thank you for the love. Well, let me zoom in back, let me zoom back in on the, the chart so you can see them again. <laughs> It's just, you know, that you, you open with interest. That's like going direct, but in front of, in a two set, right? It was going nowhere, you know? They were seated and you were kind of holding court that way. Yeah, attraction, comfort, seduction. It's gotta happen in phases, gotta do it in order. Mystery, discovery. He's still alive, you know. <laughs> Who knew? Some guy asks you, know, is he still alive? Is he really it's... still alive? He <laughs> saw some thing, yes. funny thing on the yeah. internet a while ago, and he thought that was true. It's magic. I'm still he's here. He's all excited because you're back in Good. the game. Good. Well, back in the game, but back on Earth. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Out of the coffin. Yeah. This a few <laughs> years ago, there was a, uh, a fake death um, write-up, you know? Uh, what do you call that? Um, not a mortuary thing. Obituary. obituary. That's it. There was an obituary that got, you know, written that I had died. And so a lot of people thought it was quite magical when they realized I had risen from the dead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> resurrected. Was that an April Fool or a New Year thing? It was an April Fool joke, not by me. And it was just stupid and it got blasted to my entire list. My brother, when he heard it, cried. Yeah, my older brother, really... he cried. He yeah. thought I was dead. But I'm, so it was a very, uh, yeah. very traumatizing moment. Because apparently Mystery's a robot. Let me just come in for two seconds. Yeah, he's, he's alive. Ow! He's alive. My nipples are like dimes. Yeah, mine are rock star nipples. So. Yeah, <laughs> they cut through glass. He'll never get stuck in a phone booth ever again. I got adopted by porn stars in Hollywood for a while. And, and every time they introduce the me, they introduce me. This is our friend Sean. He's from London. I'm not from London. And he has rock star nipples. And after a month of them squeezing them, they became rock star nipples. And they became a routine. It was good. By the way, I have nothing mean? to say about that. <laughs> Do you know what? I've been trying to grow a beard now for, stopped, for, for a month. And I realized I shouldn't bother because I have naturally curly hair. And I've got curly pubic beard hair. <laughs> Isn't his nice that look? Mm. Oh, oh. Yeah, this is called laziness. <laughs> this is my lazy look. Oh, here's my quick thought on beards though. You know, they say, uh, should I grow my beard or should I have it shaven, which is better for girls? I suggest do them both. Shave in the summer, logic. Grow it in the winter, even more logic. Especially if you don't like turning the heating on, you wanna stay warm in England when it gets cold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so those are some things on the walls to guys, think about. Guys, pleasure sharing as yeah, always. Good times, guys. Cheers. See you soon.